born on April 9, 1982, Michael Perry, was never imagined to one day become one of Montgomery County's worst murderers. His troubles started at an early age, at the end of first grade, when he was eight years old, Perry was diagnosed as having attention deficit disorder. At the end of the seventh grade, Perry was diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder. At the end of the eighth grade, Perry was diagnosed with conduct disorder. Antisocial personality disorder is the adult form of these disorders. Although he was twice admitted to a mental hospital, Perry tested negative for bipolar disorder and did not qualify as learning disabled for special education classes in elementary school. In junior high, Perry stopped going to school. He ran away from home and came back when he felt like it. Perry stole his mother's jewelry and tried to pawn it, stole his parents' van and ran it into a mailbox and broke into a neighbor's home and tore the wallpaper and whittled the moldings. During this same time period, Perry received counseling from psychologists and psychiatrists. After Perry was kicked out of an outbound class in Florida, Perry's parents filed charges against Perry, and he was ordered by a court to attend a long-term facility for health care. In September 1997, Perry was sent to Father Flanagan's Boys Town in Nebraska. Three months after his arrival, Perry threatened his house parent, You know, you people work here. I don't know why you work here. People like me who are going to rape or kill your kids. Perry was promptly sent to the locked facility at Boys Town for four months. Perry did not have the level of depression or any DSM or IV disorder to warrant the mental health care provided at the facility. Perry's parents, fearing that they would not be able to control Perry, sent him to Casa by the Sea, a secured high school campus in Mexico. Perry graduated from high school, but not from the program at Casa by the Sea leaving on his 18th birthday. Except for four to six months in the Job Corps, four months in Houston, and a brief stay with his parents, Perry was essentially homeless after leaving Casa by the Sea. Perry stayed for short periods with acquaintances and in shelters. Moreover, except for four to six months in the Job Corps, Laying tile in Houston, and a month at Walmart, Perry remained jobless after leaving Casa by the Sea. To support himself and procure alcohol and pills, Perry stole and sold pills as well as other items. On October 2, 2001, police arrested Perry for presenting a fake prescription for 100 pills of Xanax. Evidence showed that while in the Montgomery County Jail awaiting trial, Perry was unruly. Perry became belligerent, had to be restrained, and tried to bite an officer who was restraining him. On the 24th of October 2001, Perry, then 19, and Jason Burkett, 19, went to the Montgomery home where Sandra Stodler, 50, lived with her 17-year-old son, Adam. As Perry later confessed, he and Burkett decided that they needed one or two new vehicles. They knew that Adam Stotler's parents had a lot of money as well as a newer Camaro and Isuzu Rodeo. They devised a plan to ask to spend the night at the Stotlers and then steal the Camaro while they were asleep. Driving Burkett's girlfriend's truck, they went to the home at about 7 p.m. Mrs. Stotler told them that Adam would not be home until around 9 p.m. They started driving away, but then decided to go back and steal the car, while only Mrs. Stotler was home. 
They parked the pickup down the street and walked back to the house. Burkett knocked on the door and asked to use the phone, while Perry snuck into the house through the garage, with the shotgun. Perry hid in the laundry room and knocked on the back door. When Mrs. Stotler came to answer the door, he shot her with the shotgun. She fell to the floor. When he saw that she moved, as if trying to get up, he shot her again. He and Burkett then grabbed some blankets and sheets off the bed to cover the body. Burkett ran down the street and got the truck and loaded the body into it with the blankets and sheets. Perry wanted to steal the Camaro, but was unable to find the keys. They drove away in the truck, disposed of the body at Crater Lake, then drove to Conroe and picked up Burkett's girlfriend, Kristen Willis. The group drove back to the Stotler's gated community. They didn't know the code to open the gate, but they knew Adam would be coming home soon. While they were waiting, they devised a plan to tell Adam that a friend of theirs had shot himself while they were hunting squirrels, and they needed his help. Adam then arrived in the Azusa Rodeo with his friend, Jeremy Richardson, 18. After Perry and Burke had asked Adam for help, they drove out to a wooded area, while Adam and Jeremy followed in the rodeo. The four boys got out of their vehicles and walked into the woods, while Willis stayed in her truck. Adam then suggested that they look for the friend from a different road, so he and Perry drove away in the rodeo, while Burkett and Richardson stayed in the woods. According to Perry's confession, Adam parked the rodeo, and the two of them got out. Burkett then approached them with the shotgun, alone. Burkett asked them if they heard gunshots, for he fired his shotgun several times to signal his location to them. Burkett told Adam he would take him to where the others were. Perry walked back to the rodeo, while Adam went with Burkett. Perry saw Burkett shoot Adam, then he covered his eyes and heard another shot. He uncovered his eyes and saw Burkett shoot Adam a third time. Perry then walked over to Adam's body and pulled his car keys out of his pocket. Burkett and Perry drove the rodeo back to where Willis was waiting. She became upset with them and drove home. Burkett drove Perry back to the Stotlers. Perry grabbed Adam's wallet from the Isuzu and took the keys to the Kumaro off of his key ring. He then drove the Kumaro away. The boys then went home, smoked some cigarettes, got cleaned up, and went out to a club. On the morning of the 26th of October, Perry was driving the stolen Camaro when police spotted him committing traffic violations. After a high-speed chase, Perry wrecked the Camaro and fled on foot. He was apprehended and booked as Adam Stotler, whose wallet he was still carrying. He was then released on bond. On October 30, 2001, a Montgomery County Sheriff's Corporal found Perry, Burkett, and another man in the White Isuzu Rodeo at a truck stop. The vehicle hit the corporal in the course of fleeing, but the officer managed to shoot out the back passenger tire. The vehicle crashed into a nearby store. Perry and Burkett, toting a shotgun, climbed a fence and ran to a nearby apartment complex where police arrested them. After giving him the Miranda warning, a detective took a statement from Perry in which he admitted to the crime. Evidence showed that the night before his arrest, Perry pointed a loaded shotgun at Jason Burkett's girlfriend's head and said, I have already killed somebody. It's not going to hurt me to kill anyone else. On May 22, 2001, 
Police arrested Perry for deadly conduct after he shot at a house. On the 27th of October, Sandra Stotler's body was found in Crater Lake at 4.30 p.m. On the 30th of October, a Montgomery County Sheriff's Corporal spotted the stolen rodeo at a truck stop, with three occupants. The vehicle struck the corporal in the course of fleeing, but the officer was able to shoot out a rear tire. The vehicle crashed. Perry and Burkett fled on foot, carrying a shotgun. They climbed a fence and ran to a nearby apartment complex, where police arrested them and recovered the shotgun. Perry, who had a deep cut on his arm from the crash, was taken to a hospital for treatment. Officers questioned him at the hospital and obtained the confession. At his trial, Perry claimed that police coerced the confession from him and ignored his request for a lawyer. I had a gun shoved in my face, he testified. At the time, there was quite a bit of excitement. I was under the influence. My arms hurt pretty bad and I was real scared. My condition in my mind state was that I am going to tell anything he wants to hear to get him away from me. To get out of this situation, and that's what I did. Both were arrested hiding in a neighboring apartment complex where the shotgun used to kill Sandra Stotler was found. Forensic evidence found near Crater Lake, in the woods, and at the Stotler residence matched Perry's confession. Perry was tried for Sandra Stotler's murder, and sentenced to death. During his trial, Perry took the stand in his defense and claimed that his confession was coerced by police and untrue. The jury did not buy it. Accomplice Burkett was tried separately, convicted of capital murder and sentenced to life in prison. Michael James Perry, at the age of 28, was executed by lethal injection on the 1st of July 2010 in Huntsville. Texas for the murder and robbery of three people. His final meal was three bacon, egg, cheese omelets. In addition three chicken cheese enchiladas, and three each of Pepsi, Coke and Dr. Pepper. His last words were, I want to start off by saying I want everyone to know that's involved in this atrocity that they are forgiven by me. He sobbed briefly then whispered, Mom, I love you. I'm coming home, Dad. I'm coming home. Thank you for watching Death Row.